Okay, so in the videos I've been making since I restarted making videos, you know, I've made them for two or three years and then I took a break for about three years and a lot happened in the three years. And, and since I've been making videos again, uh, they have pretty much all been about um, surrender equals salvation, that you're not going to heaven until you're surrendered. So the uh, question, you know, maybe people have is, well, is that biblical? Like, okay, you make a good argument, you know, you, uh, you have a strong testimony, but is that scriptural? Is that biblical? So what I want to do in this video is just give you some verses that show this notion of all in surrender. Because there's no verse in scripture that says, if you're going to go to heaven, you got to be surrendered. You must be surrendered. You must be all in if you're going to go to heaven. There's also no verse where Jesus says, hey, everybody, I'm God. Hey, look at me. I'm God in the flesh. It's me, God. Like, that doesn't happen. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. The word triune is not in the Bible. But clearly, the Bible depicts Jesus as God. Clearly, the Bible depicts the Godhead as a triune Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, likewise, there is no verse that says, if you want to go to heaven, you must be surrendered. But there are all kinds of verses substantiating the notion of surrender that I've been presenting here in these videos. So let's just go through some of these verses and, sorry, low battery. <laughs> so let's, let's get started. <clears throat> Matthew 16, 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it, okay? That exact same notion is repeated, again, actually is repeated previously, that this is the repeat. So the original is Matthew 10, 38, same gospel. So that's, you know, significant. It's not the same thing being stated in multiple gospels. It's the same thing being stated twice in the same gospel, okay? So that, <clears throat> to me, says, hey, this is important. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life <clears throat> for my sake shall find it. That's Matthew 10, 38. So that's a big deal. That's not a small thing. That's not try to be a little bit better. That's not just be a little bit better person. I mean, Jesus says twice, he who holds on to his life shall lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake shall find it, which is true. You're going to have to give up this old life turn towards him. You're going to have to repent. I mean, we have a real skewed conception of repentance in, uh, I, I guess, in America. Um, we think repent means kind of do what you want and then apologize for it. Like, hey, God, I know I'm doing all this stuff. I repent. Yeah, sorry about that. Like, repent means to turn away from. You're to turn away from this old life. Turn away to this, or turn towards this new life. Let go of your life and then find it in Christ. Uh, again, Jesus is talking about all in surrender. Therefore, this is uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So it's a big deal. It doesn't say you become 5% different. It doesn't say you become a little bit better person. All things pass away. Behold, all things are new. You're a new creature. That's a big deal. That's, a, that's like you, you lost your old life so you could find your new life. You gave up being an old creation so you could become a new creation, right? So Romans 12, 1, I beseech you, brethren. I'm sorry, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So that's a real big one. Present yourself, excuse me, as a living sacrifice, right? That's not a small thing. That's like losing your life for his life. Lose your life so you can find this new life. Offer yourself as a living sacrifice. I mean, these are big, heavy terms that are coming up in Scripture. And I've got five or six more. These are not small, more so, a little bit different, a little bit better, just make, just change 5%, just try not to cuss as much. This is like a whole different life. Offer yourself as a living sacrifice. 2 Corinthians 6.16 And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. 
As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. So you are the temple of the living God. This is, see, the Holy Spirit is not some far off, unimaginable, or we just think about the Holy Spirit theoretically type thing. Nor is the Holy Spirit supposed to be something we mingle with. I mean, we are supposed to merge with the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be indwelled by the Holy Spirit. You're the temple and God dwells within his temple. You're the temple of the living God. The Holy Spirit is housed within you, right? So this is uh, stated even more so in uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 19 through 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So you, you are not your own. You lost your life for his sake. You offered yourself as a living sacrifice. Jesus paid the price. He, he shed his blood for remission of sins. So he paid the price. You opt, if you opt in, then you are bought. You are bought by that price. Know ye not that ye are not your own. I mean, that's a heavy passage, right? So uh, Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So uh, again, Paul's presenting this notion of offering yourself as a living sacrifice. He has so handed himself over to this state of surrender that is no longer him that lives, but Christ that lives within him. So again, that whole notion of a, of a completely different, changed, transformed life. Galatians 2.20. Uh, oh, wait, that's what I just read. <laughs> Revelation 3.16. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, right? I've talked about this in other videos. God is not interested in lukewarm. God is not interested in being your boyfriend or your girlfriend. God is not interested in even being your fiance. God is interested in hot. God is interested in bride, marriage, all in, sealed, surrendered, living sacrifice, Give up your life for his life. Give up the old life for this new life. Lots of heavy passages. Uh, Galatians 6.14. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Crucified, living sacrifice, surrender, all in. Big deal. Last one I got here, and uh, this is probably not an exhaustive list. I mean, I'm just going off of verses that I know, verses that I've come up, uh, you know, come across recently. There's probably more, but, you know, this is like, I think, 10 verses total that I got here. So 1 Peter 4, 2, that uh, this is whoever is in Christ, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. And I could put that one in there too. Jesus talked about that. He said, you know, the only people who are like his are the people who do the will of the Father. I think that comes up in the, uh, the true vine passage where Jesus says, I'm the true vine and you can do nothing apart from me. Basically, you've got to be plugged in to this true vine, right? So that's 10 verses that talk about all in, sacrifice, being a living sacrifice, giving up your life for Christ's sake, giving up, stop being an old creation, be a new creation, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit, you're bought with a price, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that lives in me, if you, if you say you're in Christ, then you should do the will of the Father, these are big, heavy passages, and they don't trump John 3.16, they help you to understand John 3.16. You know, I'll probably do a separate video about John 3.16, but I mean, just real quick, you have to ask yourself when John 3.16 says that, you know, whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, what does belief mean? I mean, you got to understand belief in the context of a, of a Bible that is several thousand verses in the New Testament. You can't just have this one John 3, 16 verse, you know, trump everything else. 
you've got to understand it within the context of this whole New Testament. So when he talks about belief, well, what does belief mean? What does belief look like? What it, could there be improper belief? Because like I said in the other video, you can believe in vain. You can have vain belief. Uh, James says you believe there's one God, you do well. The devils believe and they tremble. You know, his point being, you, you say you believe in God, well, so what? The demons believe in God. You believe in God. The demons believe in God. I don't care. Where's your works? You're, you're, if you're in this for real, let me just tell you that faith without works is dead. So if you don't have works, then you don't have the right type of faith. You, you don't have the right type of belief. You haven't really accessed what Christianity is. You have not become the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have not become a new creation. Because if you had, life would look like you had. If you had, you would have works generated out of this faith, right? So I'll probably make some more videos in the future um, just about, you know, maybe John 3.16 specifically or, you know, what about things like hyper grace or easy believism or, you know, all these different types of things. Um, but for this video, I just wanted to make it clear that this notion of, of all in surrender, uh, that this is a powerful thing, a powerful conversion, that it's not just a small, it's not just an intellectual belief that triggers slight changes, that this is a big deal. I mean, I just gave you 10 verses that show like this is heavy and this is a big deal. And you know, you can add into this all the passages about love and righteousness and charity and yield your members as members of righteousness and endure until the end and move on unto perfection. And know ye not that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, uh, ye shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven, move on unto perfection. I mean, there's a laundry list. If, if I was to give you a video of all the verses that pertain to either being good or refraining from sin, I mean, there's probably two, three, four, five per page. I mean, you're talking a thousand verses or something, 500, a thousand verses, whatever, that overtly address a changed life, being good, being loving, being charitable, living honorably, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So John 3.16 is true. true. <laughs> Whoever believes has everlasting life, but within the context of all the other verses, within the context of these 10 verses I just read you, you better ask yourself, well, well, do I have that type of belief? Do I have that belief that's really linking me up to this? And do I have the belief that's gonna give me everlasting life? And if you don't, then you wanna get it. And the way to get it is to surrender, go all in and be born again and be a new creation and move on onto perfection. So that's it. Hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Aloha. God bless.